Well, this is very strange for me. No. Uh, it is? Yeah. Since when? I'm going to do something a little different than what I usually do. And I've prepared a little differently than I usually prepare. Uh, let's start by turning into Acts chapter 20. So there should be a Bible in every row if you need a Bible. Um, you can take that with you if you need to. We're going to read from this here in a moment. Um, while you turn there, let me tell you a little bit about what I've got in store for us. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to share something from the Word. And uh, these are the Apostle Paul's. Uh, this, is a, this is a story about just kind of his experience and some stuff that he said to some people as he was departing from that ministry. He had planted a church in Ephesus, and as he was leaving there, he had some departing words. And I'm going to take those words, and I'm going to make them my own. Um, after that, I'm going to turn this into kind of like an open discussional format so that we can just share with each other. I mean, our group is small enough where we can get away with that, and we are a church family. And there's a lot of broken hearts here. And so I'm just going to open it up. And so if you have anything that you just want to share, this is a safe place to do that. If you have any questions, you know, then this is a safe place to ask those. And there may be some stuff that you ask that might be so personal that I'll say, let's talk about that after the gathering together one-on-one. -on -one. But for the most part, you know, I'd love to just deal with all that together as a church family. And so maybe you've, you know... You're, you're, you're scared. Maybe you don't know what you're feeling. And you just want to want to shout it out. Or I don't know what. But we're going to just process this together. And then we're going to pray. And you know how I like to do. We just kind of pray together. Where I'll maybe start and then you can jump in. And whoever wants to pray can pray. And we'll just have an open time of prayer. And just experience. You know, we're going to hear from God in his word. Maybe we'll hear from him while we pray, and we're going to talk to him. And Maybe we want to complain to him. Maybe we want to thank him for something. Maybe we want to ask him some questions. I don't know, but we're going to pray together. And so I'll share a brief thing from the Word, and I'm going to leave some time for us to just kind of freestyle it a little bit and just heal and process together. How's that sound? Good. So a little different. While you're turning to Acts chapter 20, you know, whew, this is rough for me. This is, so I'm just torn up. My heart is broken to shreds. I don't want this. The worst part about it for me and us is the suddenness of my departure. If I had it my way, we'd have planned this out for a long time. I'd have had somebody in place long before I could go. But for those of you who are familiar enough with my situation, I can tell you that there's just really this one way forward for grace. And if you'd have seen what I've seen over this weekend, you'd have no doubt in your mind either. It's getting bad. And it is time sensitive. And it hurts. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I'm sorry. This sucks. Can you say sucks at the pulpit? <laughs> I think you can't agree with the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you no, you just did. You can't. So we did. And that's happening. We're, we're moving on. So I am very sorry, though. It, it really is just the most heartbreaking thing. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm a man of many words. And I just got no words for this. I really don't. Uh, I, my heart breaks with you as your hearts are breaking. I've got my own heartbreak as well. And I just, I don't even know what to say. So, I have wept over this church. There's a, a road of recovery for the heartbreak that I've experienced and what I've discovered that's breaking my family. Um, that's pretty textbook. The stuff that I'm going through there, the stuff Grace is going through there, it's all pretty routine. As I've walked through that with some people who know about these things better than I do, there's, I just got clarity. Well, I'm not going through anything unique, and that makes my future pretty predictable. But for us, there's not a textbook for this. I mean, I'm sure we're not the first to go through this, but there isn't a roadmap of recovery. Like, we're kind of building this thing as we fly it. And it's, 
mean, I've always felt like that's not good enough when it comes to the spiritual care of people we love. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, that's where we're at today. I'm really grateful to see you all here and all your support and encouragement. Um, but hopefully this will be a time of healing. Amen. Hopefully we can try to figure out what the road forward looks like together. I've been telling Gray something that applies to us, especially over this last weekend. I've been saying something over and over. I know you're sad, but the best place to be sad is together. And whenever we talk about why we're sad, I'm, I'm talking to you like I've talked to my four-year-old, so this is basic terms. When we talk about why we're sad with people we love, then it helps us feel better. And I've been teaching her how to pray. You should have heard her pray last night. I mean, she just oh. shared her heart of pain with God last night in a very authentic way. And if a four-year-old can do it, we can do it. <laughs> yes. And we're going to do it. So, <clears throat> I'm going to leave a lot of room for that. I'm going to dedicate this gathering to the reading of the word as we usually do, which is the tradition of grace of the Lord. We put the Bible at the center of every one of our gatherings, and we are a praying church. We pray like it's going out of style. And so we're going to do some praying today. And uh, as we have dedicated our time in these ways, there has been an explosion of the Spirit inside us and inside, uh, just inside the proximity of us. So that will be the same today as it's always been for us. And we'll have some directed conversation as a family. Now for the book of Acts, starting in chapter 20, verse 17. So now from Miletus, he, uh, speaking of Paul, Paul sent to Ephesus and he called the elders of the church to him. So he's about to leave town and he planted this church in Ephesus. You've probably read or at least heard of the book of Ephesians. That's a letter he wrote to this church he planted after he left. He stayed in touch with his church plant and he continued to, you know, just love on them and offer whatever he could to help them grow. And he um, called the elders before he left. He called the leadership to him. And when Verse 18, when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time, from the first day I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plot of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable. Give me a time for a drink. <laughs> he says, uh, verse 28, How I didn't shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying to both Jews and the Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what's going to happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions Awake. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Mm -hmm. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own cells will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease day or night to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way we must help the weak and remember the word of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and he prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on all the part, on all their part, when they embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful, most of all because of the word he had spoken that they wouldn't see his face again. And then they accompanied him to the ship. 
So, let's unpack that. Uh, Paul, as he's departing, he didn't want to go without seeing, seeing some of his church family. And he says in verse 18, he says, you know, we've been together for a while. Some of you, we've been together since the beginning. And you've seen how I've lived my life all along. I haven't, um, you know, with humility and tears through trials and tribulations, I've been serving regardless uh, just to make sure that what I do is profitable to you. And uh, for some of us, we can relate to that. You know, this uh, church plant um, has come with some quirks and some perks. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. I used to say that all the time. I mean, there were some trials. There are some. It's really exciting to see somebody get saved. It's thrilling to see somebody become an authentic disciple in Christ. It's it's a it's it's, it's thrilling to see somebody become a leader and start to answer their calling to baptize somebody in these waters or out in the lake. Uh, but it comes with challenges. It's like you poke the devil in the chest and he doesn't sit quietly by when you do that. Uh, so it's it's come with some stuff. It's come at a cost. But everything we've done has been for the benefit of the church. Amen. And I mean, you guys have seen it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So these aren't things that I would I would have you know flown a flag and said, but I mean, Paul's saying it here, and I'm just trying to make his words mine as we go to figure out what departing looks like, serving the Lord with all humility, with tears, and with trials. Verse twenty, he says, "How I didn't shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, and teaching you in public from house to house." Now, sometimes the word of God will get to me in trouble. There has been some unpopular messages. Messages. I have literally had families leave this church over some of our messages. People who were close to us, who we love very dearly, especially when we started talking about spiritual gifts. People who we love very much said, hey, you know what? I'm out. And in the back of my head, I wondered if that was going to happen before I said the words that were in the scriptures, but I had to say them anyway. So we believe here in the inerrancy of Scripture. We believe, you know, I, I, you've heard me say it. If you've been with me long enough, you've heard me say a few times that if you stick with me long enough, you'll hear me preach every single word in this entire book. Amen. And uh, that comes at a cost. Because it's convicting. This stuff will get me in trouble with people. But without hesitation, we move forward proclaiming the fullest of the gospel publicly. Verse 21, he says, testifying to both Jews and Greeks. So that in his language, that'd be like saying, you know, in diversity. So we haven't isolated ourselves to just our group, but we've, we've, we want to say it to the world. And one thing I've always been just really grateful to be able to brag about this church family is our diversity. I mean, it's right in our mission statement. We just are a diverse church family, which represents the community around us very well. And uh, that, that please, I think I believe a healthy church is a diverse church. Amen. Now, if your community is not very diverse, I mean, that's a different thing. I'll tell you one thing that's going to be kind of weird about where I'm moving. I looked up the demographics, 96% white. So pretty different than Aurora. Yeah, there's not a lot of diversity there. But there's not much I can do about that. I mean, I'll do my best to have a diverse church, but it's 96% white. So that's just the area I'm moving to. Nevertheless, we have proclaimed, he says, to both Jews and Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That one sentence right there kind of describes the whole sermon series we were in before I left. The grace of the Lord. We've just been talking about lordship and faith and saving faith and how it motivates us forward. These paradigms, these this paradox of... Uh, you know, we, we, we see this word obedience, and, and sometimes we might struggle with that, but then we also hear Christ say that, you know, my love will motivate you into this lifestyle, that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And we realize that it's not obedience at all, because it is the natural response of one in love to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we unpacked that for almost three months before I left. Of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 22, he says, And now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what's going to happen to me there. Amen. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. I don't think I'm going to jail anytime soon. 
unless they start making being Christian illegal like it is in some countries. But uh, yeah, I'm not worried about that part. Those days are over. <laughs> Uh, verse 24, but I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself. <sighs> yeah, this thing for grace had to be. There's just no other way forward. Amen. And I am, my heart is ripped to shreds over what's happening with us. And as I look out at this group, and <sighs> the heartbreak, you know, there's a lot of other ways, a lot of better ways this could have gone down for you. But, and for me, you know, I'd rather not have left. I was settling in here. And I was talking about my plan being, you know, being here till retirement and then, you know, retiring somewhere where there are no winters. Well, Pennsylvania's got pretty hard winters. Yes. This move to PA is not for me. Certainly not for us. You'll be back. It's for grace. It has to be this way. My life, my plans, in a second, I surrendered them. Amen. Because there's just only one way forward for her right now. If only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus. To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Many of you have asked why I pastor a church when I get there. I think the calling of God is still on my life. I think it's going to be a while. I've got some healing to do. Amen. I've got to work on grace for a while. I've got to get uh, that figured out. I've got to get my house in order. Um, I've got some work ahead of me before I can focus on the care of others. Especially the uh, spiritual development, leadership development, and all the things that get me excited about being a pastor. That's just not in my immediate future. For the same reasons why I stepped down in the first place, I am just not even able to guess at how long it'll be. But the calling of God is still on my life. So one day, sure, and I think I'm measuring that in terms of years and not months. I think when I get back uh, to Pennsylvania, there's going to be some disciples need to get made pretty quick. And I think any Christian can do that in any emotional condition and should be doing that no matter what. God will be opening up some doors for me to do that pretty quick. There's some people back there that would definitely follow my lead into a Bible study or something like that. Uh, and so I'll bet you there'll be salvations this year. Might even get to baptize somebody before the leaves turn. Um, but uh, I might be dreaming a little bit too. There's definitely going to be some salvation. So think about think about just one example. You guys have seen one of these. Um, I have a friend. He lives in Breckenridge. He moved here from Pennsylvania. He and I used to party pretty hard back in the day. He moved to Breckenridge, and he saw me online, and he says, that's not the CJ I know. He's a preacher. No, can't be CJ. And so he said, I got to see this. There's no way this is that guy. And so he drove in on Easter 2019, and he gave his life to Christ that day in my house after the gathering. Today, he is plugged into a church in Breckenridge, and he plays on their music team, and he is uh, um, he's growing. He's growing. Because if I could do it, anybody could do it. And when I get back there, Butler, Pennsylvania is not going to know what hit it. <laughs> but it's going to be a while before I get into a spiritual leadership role. Because I'm just very distracted and i got to work on myself for a little bit. But one day, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll start a Bible study in my house and who knows what that will turn into. And I don't know. But the calling is still there. Verse 25. Now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. There's a place where mine and Paul's word part ways because I would like to see y'all again. And plus, we're going to be in heaven together. So I've done my best to make sure of that. Amen. And so 10,000 years from now, we'll be partying on the shores of New Jerusalem. <laughs> and so for maybe many of us, we won't see each other in this earthly life. But I hope... For a lot of us, we do see each other again. And I'll come back out here. These Rocky Mountains are a fun place to visit. And you know where I'll be on a Sunday morning. So we will see each other. Plus, we have technology available to us that Paul didn't have. He had to write letters on parchment. We can FaceTime. So that's nice. 
Verse 26, Therefore I testify to you this day, I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. He's referencing another place in Scripture where uh, the idea is, and you've even heard me mention this in our recent sermon series, you know, there's some uncomfortable convictions that come from living in the Word. And I, as the pastor, am responsible for making sure you know that. So I've said, you guys know too much not to do this, right? And the idea being that if I kind of held that back from you because it'd be more comfortable, make sure more people come, then, then your blood would be on my hands. It would know, be my bad when you sin not knowing any better because I had the chance to teach you. And, uh, but I have not held any of that back. Sometimes, uh, sometimes at my own cost, he says, you know, I didn't shrink from declaring the whole counsel of God to you. That's another reason why I wanted to share the entire word with you. And we unpacked it very deeply in every gathering. Verse 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own cells will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. I spent a great deal of time talking about what healthy spiritual leadership looks like. So you guys know how to pick a pastor. You guys know not to settle for less than the standard that we have discussed whenever we've talked about spiritual leadership. Be patient. Wait. It's one reason why I'm very grateful that we have the Send Network on our team. And my sending church, our sending church, your sending church. Because they are going to present to you candidates that are absolutely qualified. And then you'll be a part of the selection process. You're, you know, in some networks, some denominations, like you, the pastor's imposed on you, you will not get a choice in that. Here you will get, you know, a voice. And the leadership of the Send Network in our sending church and the leadership team of this church is going to help in choosing candidates. So that nobody's even going to be presented as an option unless they are absolutely qualified. And so I'm very comfortable with that process. And I just encourage you to be patient. Um, a church plant tends to attract, well, he talks about sheep among wolves. There's sometimes when there's a vacuum for leadership, there's going to be people who want to, I mean, you know, they, they know the word well enough to be able to, uh, demonstrate themselves as knowledgeable. Um, you know, they know church language enough to be able to uh, um, look experienced and qualified. And in a small church, you know, there's such a need for that sort of thing that, you know, people can end up being put into leadership positions who shouldn't be there. Who remembers us talking about that in the Grace Influencers training, in my leadership training? Amen. We talked about the leadership selection process and how to identify those people who, you know, aren't called to that position. And so you guys have what it takes. You've had all the resources. You've heard it all from me over and over. And you've got the Send Network and our Sending Church. So you're going to have a great leader in place. He's going to have maybe a different vision and a different management style, but it's going to be great. I know it. So... Verse 29, I know that after my... Oh, I already read that one. So verse 31, Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I didn't cease day or night to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among those who are sanctified. The word of his grace is able to build you up. I'm really grateful for your encouragement, your kind words. I'm not the only one with those words. We all have access to the same Holy Spirit. We all have access to the same Bible. And that Holy Spirit wants us to understand these words. And he wants to lead us all the same way. And he's gifted us differently. And so he's gifted me in a way that has allowed me to lead you for a season. But God's work can continue without me. It has his work has continued before me. His work will continue after me. And I hope you will be faithful to his plan for this church, not dependent on me being here. There is nothing I want more in the world 
<laughs> almost than to see this church thrive gener multiple generations would really mean a lot to me to see you guys I mean I've been seeing you guys step up and stick with it and it's just really encouraging to see you know you're doing mission spotlights you're getting outreach going again you're really trying I've seen some really encouraging exciting stuff from y'all over this last month makes me very grateful I'm seeing people fighting for their church family Amen. man that matters to me big time and you've got some practical challenges ahead of you. There are some solutions that you can't provide. You'll be dependent on circumstances you've got no control over. But nevertheless, I'm seeing you fighting for it. And that is a big deal. And so if those of you who have said, hey, how can I help? What can I do, CJ? Stick with the church. Show up next week. Be here on Sunday next week and every Sunday after. Please. Don't let your attendance depend on my attendance. Fight for this church. That really matters to me. You guys have built an amazing church. I got to take some of the credit because my you know, face is on the website. But you guys are the ones that built. You guys are the reason why we have a reputation in this city. They think we're some sort of like, you know, influential church over at the city building. We're, you know, 30 at most on the average Sunday. And they think we are influencers in this city because of you guys. That's not because of me. It's because of your volunteer work and the time you spend. You know, we have been, um, we've had a reputation in our denomination since the beginning for outreach and evangelism. And especially during all that COVID stuff, we were like one of the, they, we, they, they put a spotlight on us to show other churches how to do it. These are churches with resources and history and uh, and then here we are showing them how. That's you guys. Amen. That wasn't me. That's because of you. So you don't need me to do this. You've learned everything you need to know to keep it going. Y'all know. And if you forget, just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Um, but it's the word that's going to build you up. Verse 33, I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Nobody gets into church planning for the money. <laughs> Those of you who have been in our financial meetings know that to be true. Um, you yourselves know that these hands minister to my necessities, to those who are with me. And all, I, you know, I gave up a lucrative career to plant this church. And I've never been happier. That money, making that money was miserable. In all things, I've shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he himself said is more blessed to give than to receive. We've demonstrated that multiple times a month, every single month as a church family, and then some of us individually out there during the week through the care portal and all that other stuff, just one-on-one, -on -one, behind the scenes. You know, no big ministry spotlights, no magazine write-ups, just you giving to people. And helping and sharing what blessings you have, whether big or small. Generously supporting. Living this out. And then when Paul said these things, he knelt down and he prayed with them all. We will do that. There was much weeping on their part, on the part of all. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful, most of all because of the words he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. It's sad. It's okay to be sad about it. It sucks. Then they accompanied him to the ship. <sighs> Sometimes we can be surprised at what we're able to endure. If you would have asked me a couple of months ago if I would be in such good shape after all this, I'd have told you no. No way. To go through what my family's going through, I'd have thought it would have wrecked me. In fact, I have been through something like that before, and it wrecked me. But not this time, because this time I had Christ. I went into this with having been in the most emotionally and spiritually healthy place I've ever been in in my life. Amen. And, you know, that's been continuing to increase. My capacity for emotional and spiritual health has continued to increase year after year, month after month. And so entering into this season of trial and challenge and attack you know I'm coming out alright and little Grace 
she has started to grow spiritually in ways that I've never seen before. She's starting to pray authentically. So, for example, I used to, like, show her how to pray. I would say the words. She would say them after me. Or or maybe she would just listen to me pray or something like that. I mean, she was, she was a kid. She was a little toddler. But now, at this age, you know, she's just turned four. And she's starting to pray authentically. Like, she'll say, you know, Dear Heavenly Father. And then she'll get into the stuff that just comes from the heart. And I didn't teach her that stuff. And it's just real feelings and thoughts. And she expresses it. And you can't teach her the stuff that she's saying. And... I mean, you should have heard her last night just pouring her heart out to God as she was hurting. She was hurting. And I said, well, you know what we could do whenever we're hurting? We could pray. And talk to God about how we're hurting. And she did. And it broke my heart hearing what was on her heart. But it also pleased me very much to see her learning how to pray that heart of pain out towards God. Because that's what she needs right now. She needs to be led by Jesus Christ. Her daddy can only do so much. For us, I mean, your pastor can only do so much. I'm just not with you every day, all day. For Grace, I'll only be with her so often. But God's with her everywhere. That sounds cliche, but I'm telling you what, man, if you live in this place, it makes a big difference whenever you enter into the storm. Amen. I would joke with some of my mentors, because over the last few months, I was going through a season of just, like, just real peak. Just everything was really good. I was no problems, no challenges, everything, no stress, no drama. Now I was saying, I'm waiting for the bottom to drop out. I bet you it's going to be a bad one because it's so good right now. We just know about peaks and valleys. Well, who are we? I was right. But going into this, you know, I'm feeling, as far as for myself, I'm feeling good. And I'm trying to be optimistic about Grace because of her prayer life. The other day, she went into um, our neighbor's house. She's got a, the neighbor has a four-year-old girl, too, and we've been trying to make friends since they moved in years ago and never been able to get really deeply connected. And, uh, they uh, one day invite Grace over to have dinner with them and play with this little girl. And uh, Grace at the dinner table says, hey, we didn't pray yet. And then proceeds to lead the family in prayer. So on her own, she felt convicted because there wasn't prayer over the meal. And then she led the family in prayer and they prayed together. And they came over and they told me all about it. And I felt like, I mean, this little four-year-old girl has just accomplished more with my neighbors, spiritually speaking, than I've been able to in years. Yes. And so I'm optimistic. Amen. Nevertheless, this is the hardest season of her entire life. And it's the hardest season for us as a church. But we're going into it from a strong place. Right? Like we had our legs underneath us pretty good. Right? We had our, our feet stable on a rock. You guys got the teachings. You know. You, you know. So you, we, I, I've been surprised at how much I can endure because of my faith and how far God has brought me. I think you'll be able to say the same. If you had asked me a few months ago how well I would do, I'd have told you I did done terribly. Turns out I was wrong. That the transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ can take me further than even I, your pastor, imagined possible for myself. You'd be surprised what you can endure in Christ. Yeah. But then you won't know until you have to go through it. Amen. Like when Abraham had to discover for himself if he would sacrifice his son Isaac. He, you know, God knew what he was going to do. So why would he make Abraham do that? Well, Abraham didn't know what he was going to do. And so it was to show Abraham what he would do when faced with the command. And for me, you know, if, I, if you would ask me a few months ago, and say, God wants you to do this, will you say yes? I'd have said no. I would say no to that. <laughs> I decline obedience to God in this. But turns out I would say yes. Turns out that he knew this day was coming for us. And he thought it better that we go through this than to have never started down this road at all. Amen. And you know what? For me, I haven't agreed with that completely this whole time. But I'm starting to get the picture. That there's been an impact here that never would have happened any other way. Right now you guys know stuff you never would have figured out any other way. You guys have had ministry experiences you never would have gotten any other way. But God has insisted that this be, even though it had to go like this today, that it's better than to not have done it at all. And I'm starting to appreciate that. If you'd asked me a few weeks ago, I wouldn't have appreciated it at all. But as I heal, I start to see it with more clarity. That's just the way it works. So, my departing words. 
before I turn this into a conversation. There's a couple of points that I have made a few times. If you remember nothing else that I've ever taught you, I want you to remember one thing. If you remember this, you're good to go. It's the four G's. You guys have heard me talk about the four G's before? You have? See, man, our spiritual health rises and falls on the four G's. Our Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with God. And if it really is a relationship with God, if it's not some cliche, but a real deal relationship, well, then our relationship with God is going to be invested in the same way any other relationship is invested in, by how we spend our time. We can spend our time in ways that build our relationships, or we can spend our time in ways that break our relationships. The key word for that one is sin. Or we can build our relationships by how we spend time. And we've unpacked this over many weeks. We call it the four G's. If you do these four things, you will grow in your relationship with Christ. God time, gather time, group time, and glow time. God time is time spent alone with God daily. That's you and your Bible. That's you in prayer. Maybe you've got a devotional. Maybe there's some music, but it's at least going to include your Bible and some prayer time. Sometimes it's going to be so intimate and sweet that you just can't wait. Other times it is a, um, a, a task you just got to do for the sake of doing it, just like a, a kid goes to school to learn. You know, we, uh, we, we go to school to learn. doesn't mean we have to apply what we learn. Um, the application of what we learn in school is, is up to us. And in our God time, you know, we can go into that and, you know, we have, have some growing to do during that time. It can't be done anywhere else. But then our lives are transformed by that, and it's up to us to kind of submit to that. You go into your God time, and you open yourself up to receive from God, and it's going to become the sweetest time of your Christian walk. There's a time where, you know, we're new to the faith, and we're very dependent on others to feed us. But you'll get to a point where you, that God time will be the sweetest time of your week. And that will overflow into the rest of your times. And then there's gathered time. That time spent weekly gathering with your church family. That cannot be downloaded. That cannot be streamed. That is not the same as God time. That is not the same as praying on your way to work. That is you. There's stuff that can only happen in this gathering. There's ways God's going to manifest himself uniquely here. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Church is not an organization. Church is not a religious institution. It is a family that you belong to. And being disconnected from this fe- this family or wherever your church family is, you're missing out on the best God has to offer you. And you absolutely will start to backslide. You absolutely will start to notice yourself making spiritual sacrifices when you have disconnected from the gathering in your church family. So, the gathering. Third, third group time. That's time spent regularly in a small community group with my church family. Things like your potlucks, things like your small groups that happen here on Sunday mornings or during the week. So whenever you guys are hanging out during the week with each other, just um, doing life together, that's your group time. Maybe it's a, a church business meeting or it's the worship team you know, getting together to practice. But it's anywhere that you guys are getting together in small little groups, encouraging each other in your faith, and walking together through life. That can't be substituted for anything. And then... Finally, glow time. We talk about glowing in the dark. We're a church that glows in the dark. We Glow time is time spent regularly serving my church family and through my church family. Serving the community through my church family. Representing the love of God to others through acts of service. And uh, there's no better way to experience the power of God than by making yourself available for God to use. So if you remember nothing else from our time together, remember the four G's. And you apply these things daily, every single week, every single day, four G's. If you notice yourself start to slip it, ask yourself, which one or more of the four G's do I need to spend more time on? It always comes down to that or sin. There's either, you could be doing all the four G's but have a sin in your life. So it's either the four G's or a sin. If there's a backslide, if there, or if you're saying, hey, you know what, I'm ready to take the next step, whatever it is, it always comes down to the four G's or sin. Every time. So with that, um, I'm going to open it up to us. To talk, share, express. 
If you have any thoughts, questions, anything at all, and then after that we'll, we'll pray. So what's on your mind? Anything? Willie. Well, I just want to say a couple of things to you. I call you've been an awesome mentor. Uh, coming here, you accepted me just the way I was, and then everybody else accepted me the way I was. But you took the lead. Uh, you showed us many things. We love you for that, brother. We love you dearly. Uh, I don't know what else to say. But we love you, man. We're going to miss the heck out of y'all. Oh, yeah, and you taught us that word, y'all. <laughs> yeah, that y'all theology. You remember that one, don't you? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Willie's referencing the fact that I pointed out whenever you usually see the word you in the New Testament, it is in the context of y'all. It's not you individually, it's y'all. Because the New Testament is written to church families, not to individual Christians. Uh, that y'all theology. Okay. Well, if you never forget two things, remember that y'all theology. All right. Who else? Lindsay. Not only to you, but to everybody else. That I, when I fell, mm. and I've never had my eyes more open than I do today. Mm. I really think God finally opened my eyes. Um, you and this church family, and so I've never felt love like I did when I walked in here the first time from every single one of you. Um, the support, yeah, CJ, you, you, you do keep the word, and I, mm. and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> At all. <laughs> um, and I, I'm, I'm so very sorry. Mm. And, um, I'm sorry, I, I'm not, I haven't been here for you, or you guys. And that's who I am. I'm not that other Jekyll or Hyde person. Um, but I'm, I want you to know that you saved my life. Mm. Father God has saved my life. And I'm, I'm so sad to see you go because I wanted you to be able to see that too. And I know you still will from afar. But my heart is broken. And I just will constantly pray for you, and I'm so sorry I gave up. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Um, God, I just thank you guys for everything. And doors are still open. Yeah, if you're here, you haven't given up. <laughs> I didn't give up. And that's what I'm going to tell you all. It's, it's powerful. Our, our spirit is powerful. Amen. And um, I've been touched. And, I haven't been right since I haven't been here. Mm. My life is not the same without this church family. No church is church like this church family. My faith has never been faith like this church family, and thank you for that. <clears throat> I will forever cherish our memories forever. And every one of you, I want to try show my support and my love for you as well. If you've shown me, come back. It's, it's been my pleasure to have a front row seat. Amen. Anissa. I just want to say thank you for helping me make major changes in my life. I've never belonged to a church. I've never been baptized. I've never just my whole life has changed because of you and grace, you know, and I'm a disciple now, and I'm making disciples, and I know the word, and now, you know, we were working even before this happened, and all the training that you invested in me is paying off. Yes, it is. Yeah, so, you know, personally, I'm going to stick it out with the church and carry on every all the programs and stuff that you built to begin with, 
and all of us as partners are going to make sure that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I love you a lot, CJ. I'm going to miss you. And I want to stay in touch. I want to see great people. Yeah. And I just wish you the best of everything. Lori. Uh, I too am um, so grateful for you, CJ. I met you all as a house cleaner. <laughs> and came and cleaned your home and I enjoyed cleaning your home and it's it's funny in a way but it is just so strong that I wasn't really involved going to church I never really lost my relationship with my God time and stuff I didn't give it as much time as I do now but you really helped me with that um, There's been so many times I wanted to slip with my sobriety, and I haven't because of this church family and because of you. I pray for you. I pray for Gracie. I want I too want to see her grow. I thank you for all the prayers and the help with our battle with Lindsay. And um, I'm sorry I let life get in the way and not be all I could be for you and for this church family. Sorry, I haven't been a better disciple. And I know that's where I need to go. Well, you don't owe me any apologies, but if you're experiencing a conviction, no better time than now. The church mm -hmm. needs you. The church needs you now more than ever. Yeah. I'd be really grateful to see y'all, or to hear about y'all being here next Sunday. Yeah. Selena. We were at this church and we were like, yeah, I've seen you to grow up pretty much. <laughs> All three of us, and I know that you want me to become a disciple. I know that we have been to church and we say, you know, don't feel so long. But we really do appreciate you a lot. Even though you haven't seen us, we're like, hmm? A month. <laughs> you text us and you're like, hey, we're missing you. Come to church. And so we're going to remind you of I'm not gonna let you slip away that easy. <laughs> Antonia. Um, as a teenager, I never thought I'd be at this place. Um, have other other teenagers, you know, out there partying and everything. Um, you always reminded me like, if God comes now, where are you gonna be at? To where He's gonna see you the most. Is he gonna see you out there partying and everything, or even if you be waiting and playing it? I wish you could um, But you make me feel like I, like the God never give up on me, and you will never give up on us either. And you always read through the Bible to tell us that we're no matter what, but that we pray to God, worship Him because He's going by His. Thank you. Wayne. Yes. Uh, when I first met you, I had a, well, I wasn't sure. I get that a lot. Yeah, I was just see what's going to happen. More than Downey Thomas, maybe. Uh, but uh, over the years, the rest of the I got. I'm like a mold, I just grow on you. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But like I said, the first man, you're going, eh, I'm not sure. We'll wait and see. But you are truly a man of God. Thanks. Jezebel. Um, when I first met you, I didn't like, well, we didn't, I didn't like you. <laughs> so these girls were in my youth group, and we used to get in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. to God in a way and I know like right now as of right now my life is like not there but I'm really thankful for everything that you've done for me and for my family and for all of us and I'm so sad. even though I haven't seen you in a while I'm so sad to see you go but um, thank you for everything you've done for everybody else. I'm glad you came Jenny
Anybody else, Taylor? <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. It's been an emotional roller coaster. Um, and I was very confused as to why I was upset and sad and all these things. And um, I guess I've just never cared that much about another man before. Uh, <laughs> romance. And, uh, yeah, man, I was tore up. I was like a little schoolgirl about it. Um, and it's just because I love you. I love you. And um, God has always used people in my life to, to speak to me, to teach me things. And um, when I first came to faith, He used people to uh, get my attention. I noticed something different about Him. And when I came out here to Colorado to be with my daughter and I met you, I noticed something different about you. And uh, something different than, than the majority, you know, than the world. And it's, it's God living in you. Um, you have gone from a mess to a ministry, and there's no doubt that God's got, uh, got a hold of you. And he's using you in a very mighty way. Um, and you've touched so many lives. And I think uh, we're all just so tore up and emotional because... Um, we just love you so much, man. And yes. I know that um, God's not a place and he's not a local church. He's a person and I know that he's living inside of you. And I know he's going with you to Pennsylvania. And I know that you're gonna be a light there and people are gonna look at you and they're gonna see something different. Um, I just thank you so much that, uh, yeah, that I get to know you, man. I know that our, our uh, friendship will, and brotherhood will transcend, you know, this time and, and we'll, we'll be in touch for sure. But. Um, yeah, I just thank God for you, and, and I thank him for your faith and all that he's He's done in your life. Um, and I know that he will continue to see that through until the day he returns. I love you. Thanks, Taylor. I love you too, bud. Wait. We had, when we transitioned from Nation Under Grace, to the grace of the Lord. It was a hard time for all concerned. We didn't know what was going to happen. But let me, you as an individual and a man of God made this church. Through God's grace, in God's love, you were instrumental in making this church like it is today. And CJ, I, it's just, you just you just one of the one of the few. Well, you've seen enough to know. Anybody else? Tabby. So when I met you, it was right before Thanksgiving last year. And it was Soda that brought us together. <laughs> and I remember standing here talking to you and Willie, pouring my heart out. And I didn't even know you. But you were there for me. You brought me into a place with God that I lost when I lost my mother. And I never thought that I could ever have somebody in my life that could do that like she did. But then you came along. And you haven't only been an inspiration to me, but to James as well. And to make an impact on James, for those that you don't know, him, he's my fiance, um, is a big deal to me because he's not a very accepting person of people outside of his circle. He, it's just, you just made an impact on him. And he wanted me to tell you today that, you know, September, it's just around the corner. Mm. And we've extended that mm. for a year because we still want you to perform our ceremony. 
Nice. So that gives me a good excuse to come back out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like that very much. Exactly. Wow, that's uh, very touching that you would postpone your wedding a year just yes. so that I could officiate. That's crazy. And it's so that you can get yourself where you need to be. Wow. In order to. That's touching. Do that for us. And we just couldn't see anybody else marrying us but you. Because we love you. Wow. So much. <laughs> and we hate to see you go. Okay. Who well, else am I going to make pesto sauce for? <laughs> Jeez, Tabby. Thank you. Mom. Sarah. Yeah, so you already know I'm not good with goodbyes. Um, yeah. So, like, I actually don't attend this church on a regular basis, but some of you guys have seen me pop in and out for, like, different testimonies and things. And, like, when I first met CJ, um, I was coming out of a church that had completely, like, the, the leadership had become very corrupt, and it started destroying us. Um, myself and my now husband um, at the time and you know it was just it was really bad and like we were still in the church and trying to meet with leadership to try and fix it and uh, one of the one of the little pamphlet things that was like rubber banded to the doorknob was on my door when I got home from like the worst meeting that we had had and it was basically like, has your leadership screwed you over? Come to this church. <laughs> that's, a, that's a paraphrase. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that much, but it was basically talking about how like, they, like there was this heartbreaking aspect of seeing so many people that were burned torn bound and just burned out by the church. And um, for three or four months, like I, didn't, I was still at that church. And when I left, um, one of the teens came with me here and, you know, we didn't end up staying, but like we kind of came, I was like, I don't, I don't know about this, like, we'll see. And I was just, I was very spiritually bitter and very confused and, um, because I had this pastor that built into me and then this other leadership that took over just destroyed me afterwards. And, um, I posted like a video <laughs> and CJ messaged me and he had like added me on Facebook and he had like texted me, called me and left a voicemail and sent an email and sent smoke signals and a flare and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. And like, even though like I didn't end up coming back, like I wasn't really called to this body directly, like it was still, well, you know, even if you're not, like if there's anything I can do, like, and I don't know that like I would have walked away from God completely, but it would have been a much longer recovery process mm. if you hadn't come in and stepped in. Um, just because I was very skeptical of leadership of any kind at that point. Um, and like I said, just very spiritually <laughs> confused. Um, and, you know, over the years, you know, when we lost my <laughs> my husband to like his mental health issues like you know you walked around you prayed it wasn't this situation where you were like you know nope this is toxic like leave it be like it was like if you feel like you're called to this like keep your distance set a boundary pray about it you know and you know <laughs> three years later we're married now and like he's healthier than ever and you know just being able to have that and to be able to have that relationship and to see that true genuine leadership that doesn't require a membership that doesn't require you know this other stuff like it just kind of restored my faith in humanity a little bit <laughs> still working on it but like you know big steps and you know that I think like the biggest thing that like through our time and afterwards and like even for you guys is like I've seen a lot of churches crumble <laughs> in my life my short time is to value healthy grieving and moving forward over bitterness, <laughs> mm. you know? And what I will say about this body is that's different than I can even see just today. Like, I'm not even crying because of like, you know, the goodbye. It's also just to see like, you guys are still here yeah. and you're so invested. And that's such a big drastic difference. Like 
you guys have such a leg up. Like, you guys can stay together and really build into each other. And like he said, like, you have a voice in choosing a pastor. Like, do not settle. You know, like, have those honest conversations. Continue loving each other. Continue communicating. Don't let that bitterness build up anywhere. Like, if you see it, stuff it out. Because, you know, it'll make such a big difference in the long run. You know? Thank you, man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Anybody else? Shamanica. Shannon. <laughs> Didn't mean to do it, but I just want to say thank you for everything you um been doing for me, Harry. And my family. Um, <coughs> it's crazy because like um Cause like we barely see you, you don't see us, and it's like this is like us coming back, and we found what you're reading. So like I don't want to say goodbye, but then I know it's for the best. Cause again, you see that you will be the best teacher, and I wish you and Sarah and Grace see the best. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm gonna you guys. Y'all mean a lot. I feel the same way. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I love you. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for encouraging me. Um, always talking about our bad time being so important and getting better because of you. And um, I can't believe just in this short time that I've been here, how much I do love you and care mm. about you because I know you care about me. So I just want to say thank you. I will miss you. And I'm definitely going to call you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Please. <laughs> do we feel like this is helping? Is this helping heal? Is it good? Yeah. Please. It's not. Mary and I have moved here and there and been in many churches and have many friends scattered throughout the, I guess, the world now, that we don't say goodbye, but say we'll see you later. Christians, and that's it. Christians <laughs> never have to say goodbye. It's like, always like, so see long, you see you later. later. Amen. I think that's especially true for a church family, yeah. like where we've had these kinds of connections. Like, I mean, we're definitely going to be hanging out in heaven for sure. Mm. Anybody else? Joe Ed. Just want to say, personally, if there's anyone who, who when you, when I have this meal that you are living. If there's anyone that could see a dream or a vision shattered, I think that's me. A lot of you guys see me coming in like, I think almost two months ago. Oh, and a half. And, uh, when I met Pastor CJ, I was jealous of you guys. And I can say that honestly because I've been through many churches. I, I haven't met any leader that is so willing to invest in people. There's Pastor CJ. Pastor CJ would send me email like 50 emails per day. <laughs> and it's not it's not a bad thing. It's just like to show you how he's so interested yeah. in me going to conferences with him and you know meeting other leaders and uh, talking about you know, great things, how we can invest in the in God's work. And I was jealous of of this church because you know I've seen that you have a leader. I didn't know if everybody here really understand what that means to have a leader who's putting his heart into ministry. Like I know a lot of other leaders because I'm a I don't want to say I'm a pastor, but Pastor CJ always want me to remind to remember that that I am called by God. But I've I've been in other settings where. You know, you don't see the heart. You don't see God's call. And, uh, and you know, maybe you guys 
move to your faith and you probably never been to places where people are just doing ministry for money or yeah. doing ministry just to be famous. But I've seen in Pastor CJ is a sacrificial heart. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't wanna say goodbye, I'm just gonna say thank you for the seed that you dropped in our heart and specifically here in the new and I'm, I'm sure that in a couple of years you will see the fruit <laughs> of your labor. Yes. And and I can I can um, I can picture this. And uh, I just want to say thank you. I, I, I hope that, you know, with the wedding coming next year, we'll probably come here. <laughs> well played, Abby. <Heather. laughs> I'm sure we're going to find all the reasons for you to come back to Colorado. And uh, maybe we can move to this. Hey! <laughs> you guys have an open invitation. Why that be something? <laughs> thank you so much, Pastor CJ. Thank, thank you. you. Who else? Monica. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, if, you need, if you ever need a babysitter, I'm here. Okay. okay. Well, it's a long drive, but. <laughs> I would fly to y'all. <laughs> I'd take you up on that. Anybody you else? You never know, Willie and I might just take a road trip. You should. <laughs> you guys are all welcome. Chris. Well, I. Why, why are you limited to YouTube? Because <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me. There's always other bands. You know, we might just in the car. Come on, Louie, let's go. <laughs> Spur of the moment thing. I haven't been to Pennsylvania in a long time. Well, you're going to that. I'll give you all an excuse. All right, Chris. Well, I came here in um, May of uh, 2019. Um, CJ had wooed me here. Um, to be on the leadership team. I was very happy in the church I was in, but God had other plans. He used CJ. God knew that I was going to come here, and he had it all planned out. He used CJ to move me out of a, of a lovely church and to be, come here and, and be with you all. And uh, it's been such a blessing uh, to be the adult Sunday school leader and to, to um, be teaching or leading the Tumi program, which is a, a mm -hmm. seminary-like program. It's and we have lots. Of, we've had lots of students go through. We've had incredible growth, but it was all because CJ had a had a vision for what he wanted for his church, and God used used that and He's used me for part of that. And I want you to know that yesterday we had a church meeting here with Mark, or Pastor Mark. And the fruit is so <coughs> evident of what you've sown into this church and also what to me has sown in the, the program. Um, here, you opened up the door that my students from the prisons can come in and be valid members of this church and be used by the Lord and that's not always the case and there's just so much going forward that I'm excited about as sad as I am to lose you and lose your family um, I just want you to know that we're hopeful going forward and God's going to bless this church we don't know if it's going to be that we, we strengthen and grow together with a new pastor, or if um, we're going to meld in with another church, um, we we don't know. We have a lot of different options to look at, but we're all hopeful. That was so apparent yesterday, and people have stepped up and taken part and said, "Well, I'll do that and I'll do that." Where before maybe they kind of stood back and haven't been as, as strong, and and it's just been a blessing for me to watch and I just and that's because you've trained us well who would have known that the leadership training that we were taking right before you this all happened was preparing us for what's happening now who would have known God is in control he has the plan and going forward it's going to be yes. exciting to see what he does mm. thank you 
Any other thoughts before we transition? All right, so what I want to do is I want to share a little prayer time with us together. But first, I want to let you stretch your legs. And I also want to get a picture, so I'm going to be a little corny.